Hi everyone, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, we are a week into our Instagram challenge, so whether you've been following along or not, um, you can still get involved. So really this is a challenge that I wanted to do with you guys to help you um, gain some followers on Instagram. I use it as a lead generation method and um, be able to turn those followers into warmer market um, and build a connection with them. So Instagram is really, really fast paced, it's fun, it's friendly, and um, a lot of people use it out there, so it's a really good place to be. So just wanted to do a quick recap um, for you guys in case you um, were needing some help with what we went with, covered last week or you maybe didn't catch it. So the first and most important thing is your bio. So you need to have a really efficient bio. Um, there's only a limited amount of space that you can type into that bio, so make sure that you are saying who you are, use your name, and um, you know, make sure that you are covered in who you are, what you do, and that you've got a clickable link in there for your website. That is the only place that Instagram has a clickable link, so it's proper hot real estate there for you. So if you're using the six step sponsoring sequence, um, or you've got a blog that you want to drive traffic to, or you've got a capture page you want to drive traffic to, anything like that, use that link in there. Um, obviously, we use our um, at Networking Gems and in Networking Superstars, Gavin teaches us the six steps to use. So we actually drive people to our groups where we can then build relationships. And I'll talk a little bit more about that and the advantages of that in a wee minute. So your daily method of operation, um, if you can manage it, um, this is really going to help you to build a presence on Instagram and a following and people will come back for more. So three to five posts a day, if you can. And hi, Lynn, thanks for joining us. So a three to five posts a day um, and use some um, fairly simple methods to get yourself some um, followers. So we use the five by five method. So it's five minutes basically doing each of these things. So five minutes putting in a hashtag that's relevant to your industry and you would do five minutes of just liking those images that come up for that. So if you were say in health and wellness, you wanted to search wellness, um, hashtag wellness, you would like, spend five minutes liking those images. Then go to your own followers, spend five minutes interacting with your existing followers. So five minutes doing three likes and one comment, three likes, one comment, three likes, one comment. Make your comments relevant and personable um, and tag the person in the comment if you can, because um, that will just draw their attention to you even more. And then um, the last five minutes, use a different hashtag um, that you would use, you would expect your audience to be searching for, and do three likes and one comment, three likes and one comment. Again, keep the, the comment relevant, try and make it conversational, try and get them to engage with you on that comment. By doing that, you're going to actually get people's attention onto you who will come over, check your profile out, and potentially click through to your link or just hit that follow button. The other thing that you can do is um, to obviously start thinking about who are your competitors. Now, I'm not saying you should directly compete with the people who you are having sidelines or anything like that. I'm talking about the big guys. Think about who are the bigger people in your industry that have thousands and thousands of followers and you can actually go and connect with the people who are following them because they're your target market too. So if you're in health and wellness, for example, again, it's a really easy one to use. You could go and follow somebody like Jillian Michaels, who's the biggest loser and um, keep fit instructor. She's got probably got thousands of followers um, and she certainly has a fan page on Facebook. You can do the same there. Just go and connect with the people who are following her. Um, again, three likes, one comment, or just reach out and follow them. They'll probably follow you back. So that was basically what we covered last week. And, um, you know, from doing that, I mean, I have to admit, hand on heart, I'll be honest, I wasn't particularly consistent today and yesterday because I've been really, really busy. Um, but if you can get organized and you can plan your post ahead of time, you can use apps such as Hootsuite or Buffer, which are free, to actually schedule your posts. So it's a really easy way to be a bit more organized. I wasn't organized over the weekend, so I didn't do it for Monday, Tuesday. But the, the rest of the week, I have still posted stuff. I've just not posted the three to five posts as regularly. Um, I've managed to get myself 59 new followers just from doing that short, um, sharp burst of information. 
So um, if you think about how more consistent you are, if you did the five by five steps day, three times a day, just when you've got time, you don't have to spend a lot of time doing this. Just you could be um, standing in the bus queue. I did it in the doctor's surgery the other day. Just whenever you've got five minutes, you can just break that up um, and do it, and you will gain you more followers. Just remember to always lead with value. 80% value, 10% fun, and then 10% business related posts. So if you've got a profile that's out there that is absolutely just jam packed with product after product or before and after shots, then people will just get bored of that. Um, it's not actually of any value to anybody. So just avoid doing that too. So what I wanted to concentrate on this week was to take you to the next level on how to convert those followers into leads and how to help you um, ramp that up a little bit. So we're always on about engagement, right? So the more engagement you get, the more um, eyes are on your content. And that goes for Instagram too, because they have a algorithm that they work to. It's different to Facebook. It's always changing the same as Facebook says. So basically the name of the game is get lots of, um, lots of people interacting with your stuff and more people will see it. Um, so there's some things that you can do. There is a brand new feature that lets you like the comments that people put under your um, under your post. So if you've done a, a value-based post and people have commented on it, I always comment back, thanking them for their comment, tagging them in that comment. But you can now actually, there's a wee heart next to you, you can like that too. So it's just showing that you're interacting with the person. And um, it's also another wee trick here is to actually, if it's somebody that you think is, somebody you'd like to connect with is just to outright ask them, let's connect right underneath their comments. Again, tag them. Would be great to connect. Why don't you head over to Facebook and connect with me there? And then tag your bio if you're using your Facebook group. And tag your bio to your username. So they'll just click through, click through your name and then hit follow. Click through your bio and then hit join. Rather than them having to find your bio, go back to the top of your page and all that, so that's a wee, a wee golden nugget to tag yourself. And that doesn't just go in comments, that can go in, in direct messages and stuff as well. So keep your comments personal and keep them related to the, the person that's speaking to you. There are softwares out there that let you automatically um, comment and things like that. I would avoid them, guys, because actually it's pretty obvious when somebody's using an auto commenter, because what their comment is is totally unrelated to what you have put out there. So, say you've put something specific about your dinner, and then somebody writes, "This is cool." Well, your dinner is not probably cool. It's probably something to do with being healthy or a really fine tea or whatever. So, you know, that's obviously an automated comment. Um, a lot of people just use emo emojis, you know, again, can do, but it just seems a bit automated, a bit lazy. So try and write something that's of value as well there. It doesn't take you long to just write a sentence. Um, so the next stage is follow for follow when you're first building your, when you're first building your Instagram account. Now, I don't recommend you use the hashtag follow for follow because then all you'll get is people who want you to follow them to follow you. So, um, but it's all about being reciprocal. So when somebody likes or comments on your photos, you know, it's basically they're trying to um, work out who you are, what you're about. So it's always good to reciprocate if you've got time. Now, I'm not saying you need to like every single like because, you know, once you get going, you'll get lots of likes. If you've got time to go in and, and speak to people who are commenting, who may be commenting on one of their pictures. I use it as a great way to build engagement. So for example, say um, Lynn commented on one of my posts, I would actually go into her profile and I'd comment back on my post and I'd go into her profile and do three likes and one comment, just to get that engagement going between you. Um, and if I thought she was somebody that was useful to know, I would probably just follow her. Um, if she's followed me, then I'll follow her back. Now, the one thing to watch out for is don't just auto-follow. Always go in and check and engage on that person's page. Um, now, the reason that I'm saying that when you first get started is because you only have a limited number of follow bases. It's around about 7,500. And you want your followers and your following to kind of balance when you're starting to build your account. 
and um, so you don't want to look like you have followed 7,000 people but you've actually only got 200 followers because it makes it doesn't make you look like you're given value so try and keep them balanced um, and also if somebody is somebody you wouldn't want to connect with because their account is inappropriate or um, you know maybe you feel that they've just followed you purely because they want you to become a customer of theirs rather than actually networking properly and finding out if there's a need there and, and I use this as an advertising I get a lot of people from advertising businesses that kind of thing you don't necessarily need to follow their, their account it's that, that's a personal choice on whether you think that those are in your target market or not because if you find corporations are following you it's unlikely that it's one person that's doing the work behind it but it's small business people or you know depending who your target market is like moms or you know um, dads looking to get out of work that kind of thing is probably more effective um, from a building leads perspective so just you know be a bit more choosy about it but follow for follow where you can to start with because that will be um, a good way to get that relationship connection going and it'll make sure that they they're seeing things and they don't unfollow you because you follow them back the next trick to, to converting these people from followers to leads is to actually just start a conversation. So Instagram calls it direct messaging, whereas most people on Facebook call it personal messaging or PMing. Um, so if you DM direct message somebody on Instagram, um, I always direct message everyone who follows me. Um, and I just thank them, for the, thank them for the interaction, thank them for the follow. Um, I don't have a set script for that, but what I do have is a set template message that I kind of tweak. So, for example, if Val followed me on Instagram, I would go into her account, I would do three comments, uh, three likes, one comment, follow her back, send a direct message, and I would probably pick up something from one of the images that she shared. Um, just to personalize it so you're showing you've taken an interest in that person. If you send, again, there's automated ways to send these messages out. You can use different softwares. And to be honest, I, I think they're boring. Um, you know, people think they're adding value because they're like, click on my link for free, whatever value-based thing it is they're giving away. And because it's got automated by whatever software, it kind of puts me off because it's not personalized. So they haven't even taken the time now yes it's time that you could be doing with other things but this is the way you've got to think about it that you're connecting with these people you're spending 30 seconds copying and pasting a templated message from a notepad and personalizing one sentence in it putting their name in so that it looks personal and they're more likely to reply so that is the aim of the game is to get them to reply so i always leave that as I do on Facebook with an open-ended question, where are you from? Um, I see you're in the Juicy Juice company, if they have got a product out there, how long have you been doing that? You know, just engage, get them, get them basically opening up to you. Now, the idea is if you're being really, really smart about this and you're doing something like the six step sponsoring sequence, you want to drive that person to become a follow from a follower to become a lead. But you need to capture that lead somewhere. So whether it be a capture page, whether it be a blog, um, or whether it be a group, the six steps teaches you to do it in a group. Now the benefit of doing it in a group is that there's a really low barrier to entry with that. And now what I mean by that is that I'm sure you've all done it where you've clicked on a capture page and asked you to put in your name and your email and you thought, oh, I don't want to do this. I'm not going to get emails from people every day and then I'll get annoyed. I'm not saying email marketing is wrong, I do do it, but it is a system that needs to be done rigorously and, you know, um, it's a one-way interaction street because you're just emailing them, there's no two-way interaction. A blog is much the same, you're passing on value, you're giving information, but there's no interaction really. Facebook group is much more social, all they have to do is hit the join button and then they're in and they can leave whenever they want, but they will interact with you. They're more likely to um, engage with you. So if you can create a group that's going to add value and is going to 
link with your Instagram and the message that you're sending and the value that you're giving people, then you're going to have a really, really strong way to take our followers and make them into um, leads that you can then take the conversation that you started on Instagram. Because Instagram chat is not that user friendly. Um, so you can take that chat and you can move it across to Facebook, which is much more friendly and easier to manage. So that would be my tip for that. Um, the other thing that you can do is um, basically put a call to action in your posts. Um, this is, you've probably heard me say this before. You'll have seen me do it even in my own group. Um, and you'll have seen me do it on Instagram where there's a call to action. And that is basically asking people to click on the link on your bio for more information or to click on the link on the bio to access more free training or, <coughs> excuse me, or whatever it is that your niche market is. So um, you don't need to put it on all of your posts, but the more you put it on, the more eyes are going to see it, the more people are going to click through. So those are my tips for converting what our followers into leads. Is start that conversation, get that conversation rolling, and introduce your group to them or your, your link in your bio, your offer, whatever it is that you're doing to get them to click through your clickable link and always put your hashtag and username so that they can just go directly to it. Um, make sure you're follow for follow and that you're engaging on their page and that you are basically trying to convert that conversation into a relationship, just the same as you would on Facebook um, or LinkedIn or any other platform. The last thing that I wanted to cover really tonight um, is how to manage your followers. So you will get lots of people who just follow, follow, follow for the sake of following um, and they never engage in all these kinds of things um, or they don't follow back. So if you've, for example, decided that you're going to target fans of a person. So for example, I love these Nedic Warriors. An example, uh, the last look he had nearing 28,000 fans, uh, followers. So there's a lot of people there that are target market for me because I like to interact with fellow network marketers. So I like to add value to them to help them build their businesses. Um, so I would go and I would start to do my three likes, one comment and a follow, three likes, one comment and a follow on the people that I thought looked interesting, the people that I thought would be interactive are in my target area, these kinds of things. And um, you can do a good amount of those a day if you've got time to sit and do that. So if you can do a couple of hundred over the day, then you're likely to get reciprocal things. But what I would do is suggest that you give it five to seven days for them to follow you back. And if they haven't followed you back, then just go and unfollow them. Now, how do you do that? Well, the easy way to do it is to use an app. There's a couple of different apps out there. Um, there's one called um, Unfollow and there's one called Followers. Now the Followers is probably more effective and I'll put um, some more information into the group about this tomorrow um, as it lets you unfollow 60 people in an hour, which is actually Instagram's unfollow limit. Um, so don't try and do more than 60 in an hour, but at least they'll let you manage the follow unfollow. And what I do is I scroll right down to the bottom of the list and then just unfollow from there. And then that way it'll keep you more balanced as well on your um, numbers of followers versus your number of following. Um, so I'm going to open it up to questions and feedback from this week. So I'm going to unmute you all. Just give me a second. Um, and let's hear from you guys on how you guys are getting on or if you've not jumped in yet. So. Um, Debbie, I know you've done quite well this week. Is there any questions you've got? Uh, no, Laura, no questions. I just need to do more, as say. Um, I started off very well, and like you, I've had a couple of days where various things have got in the way, and I've been looking at other different things as well. So um, it's just finding the consistency, really. <laughs> Lynn, what about you? You've got Instagram, haven't you? Hi, Laura. Uh, yeah, I've just really started it this week and I didn't notice you were, you were doing the Instagram okay. training, so it's perfect. Um, yeah, I found that I made a complete mess of everything I was doing on Instagram <laughs> before. Okay. I, I found the app you were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, 
because I went in there thinking, brilliant, I could follow all these people and they follow me back. And that didn't happen. So I've been working through who I actually follow. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. There's like uh, languages from I don't even know where. There's people with no content. And I thought, oh my God, what were you doing? Yeah. So it's kind of just getting it all straight now and rebalancing. Did you, did you connect your Facebook account to your Instagram account? And when you um, up and also I, followed all of the Facebook people? Um, I've still got, I think there's people on Facebook that I haven't followed. I haven't done that. Okay, that's a, good, that's a good way to get a good bunch of followers of people who already know, like, and trust you because they're already your friends on Facebook. So um, it's a good sort of kickstart to your engagement is to use your connections from Facebook. So yeah, it might not mean that they drive into your group, but it might mean that they're seeing different content that you maybe wouldn't necessarily put on your Facebook profile. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, because we, we all keep our Facebook profile for or we should be keeping our Facebook profile for majoritively personal stuff, whereas Instagram can be, yeah, it's all value-based stuff, but it may drive them to your group, whereas your Facebook profile will be a little bit more obscure. So it's kind of a good way just to kind of get people to connect, because um, they already know who you are. You're not a, you're not a random person. Um, so that's one. I think that's uh, the thing that I've been doing, because the group is growing but it's growing really slowly and it's literally me going out every single day to, to oh, going out but on Facebook every single day talking to people about this group and it's it's really taking a long time so okay. can I give you the biggest tip that your first hundred members are your hardest to find cool and, um, <laughs> it, it's like it's like anything that builds momentum. When you're building it new, it takes mm -hmm. time to build. Um, mm -hmm. This goes for your Instagram accounts as well. Instagram is a little bit faster, but you know, when you're Facebook group and you're giving value, you sometimes feel like you're not talking to anyone. Um, mm -hmm. And that's okay because actually the more you build it, the more momentum will be built. It, it, it snowballs, you know, and it's the same with your, even with your MLM, if you think about that. Um, any of us who have built a reasonably successful MLM will know that the hardest part was the first part. Mm, yeah. I absolutely. mean, it, I can even put it to an analogy of getting out of bed at the moment. The hardest part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think maybe down to being 20 weeks pregnant and having a four-year-old that doesn't sleep. But, you know, that's the hardest part of the day for me. So, But once I'm up and I'm at them, I'm fine. <laughs> So, um, you know, it, well, think, yes, it's, it's um, 133 now. Okay. Um, so, and I think it's just, I just wanted to be good at Facebook and really get, you know, a, a really kind of proficient at that before I move to the next one. Um, so it is, it's just learning because I don't do Twitter or blogging or any of these yet. Oh, I so. mean, that's the thing is you, it is a very big tip to say start with one and, and master it and then add in others because, as you go because what becomes is people get overexcited and they try and take on <laughs> too many things and then they become a master of nothing. Um, exactly, yeah. So, you know, I mean, I actually only do two or three things. <laughs> myself um a lot of and the, th the other thing I do do like Twitter is very automated which I'll cover um in the next couple of, couple of weeks on how to basically share your information that you're sharing on Instagram to other places and it, it's there's no work involved and you just have a presence there um so you know Facebook is is more laborious than Instagram is I think but the principles of how you communicate is exactly the same. It's about adding value, people being attracted to you, and taking that information and then burning that, burning that person who's just a fan or a follower or a, somebody who's been connected with you and making them a person who can become a relationship with you. So 
you know, um, you're not just a, a face, you're not just a picture, you suddenly become a person of interest to this person. It's the same principles on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. It's just the getting the interest in the first place is slightly different to each platform. So, you know, um, LinkedIn is very different to, to Facebook and Instagram. Instagram's always image based. Facebook can be lots of lots of different things. So, but once you get them on the conversation, it's basically the same conversation that you should be having. So. I think the the most difficult thing has been the conversation. Okay. So keeping the conversation going on on Instagram, and what I've suggested is I think there's two people that I've connected with now onto Facebook from Instagram. Okay. But that's been the most difficult thing to do to try and move it over to Facebook. Okay. So we could maybe look at some tips for that then on, on actual conversations that you could be having this week then. Um you you know you won't get a lot you won't get a hundred percent of anybody. Um you know never will but what you need to look at is is if you're getting drip feeding of people into your group daily that would be ideal um, yes. you know you have only one or two to start with but robin for example who's been on instagram for a year now has over four thousand people in her group just solely really from instagram and that is the potential that's there but it's built momentum massively even in the last two three months she's gone from three thousand to four thousand in the blink of an eye and that's just because she's consistent and she posts regularly and she connects with people. So she just does that every day and it works, but it's that first few hundred always seem the hardest. Yeah. What yeah. about everybody else? Val, Irene, Irene, I know you're on Facebook. Val, are you on Facebook, uh, Instagram, sorry? Um, I've just I just got a new account set up, so yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm you can't well Instagram on a Mac. Yeah, everything that we've covered in the last seven days, if you go back through the Network and Gems group, um, you should be able to pick up on what we've talked about and it'll give you some good tips. And if you follow along over the next, um, to the end of the month, then you should, by the, the end of the month, you guys should all be pretty prolific at doing it consistently. And... Um, I'll be sharing loads of tips and hints and different tools you can use to make it um, as easy as possible for you. Um, what about Irene? You, how's yours going this week? Can you hear me okay, Laura? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, um, yeah I've, I've, what I've found is I'm getting lots and lots of followers. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say I've particularly managed to interact with a lot of them. You know, I have, I have gone in and said as you suggested you know thank you for the like and what do you do mm -hmm. blah 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 and sometimes yeah they do come back and then the next one is just don't yeah okay um, so i'm never i'm never too keen to be too pushy no um, and i think there is there is a there is a fine line there you don't want to go back constantly feeling like you're just bombarding somebody if they're yeah. going to come back to you they'll come back to you and if they don't you just think next move on you know um so um Cool. The, the only thing I'm not sure about is how you actually link up the Facebook to the Instagram. Okay. How do you actually do that? It's, it's in the settings. I'll, what I'll maybe do is, um, I don't know if I can actually do a video on it. I haven't done it before, but I'll have a look. Mm -hmm. I can do a retraining video for you guys. Okay, um, that would be great. That. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So any other questions while well, you have me? No, I think I'm okay with uh, everything at the moment. Just just how to link it up and the bio thing. I, I maybe need to sort of check out my bio. Yep. Um, the, the hashtag things. Um, did you see the video that I did yesterday on hashtag? I had a quick listen to it rather than watching it. Okay. Um, I'm trying to do about a dozen things at the same time here, but I was listening to it. Um, so I'll try and actually sit and watch it. Yeah. But what I do tend to do is, you know, similar to what you were saying, is just to start typing in maybe the likes of health mm -hmm. and then see what comes up and then go for the highest um, amounts of um, hashtags on it, you know. I'll mm -hmm. kind of go for that, if it's relevant, obviously. Yeah. So what, what our biggest tip for you is on the hashtags is obviously, you know, find what hashtags work for you and are relevant to your core um, market. 
but don't actually do the ones that are the highest. So for example, if I was to hashtag entrepreneur, mm -hmm. it's got like two point something stupid million um, live posts. Uh -huh. So it's a bit like Facebook in that it actually moves the newsfeed very quickly. So the more hashtags that you have under that one is your photo won't be seen so quick so much because it'll just move down really quickly so if I did a search for hashtag entrepreneur and did an image just for the entrepreneur and then a minute later did hashtag entrepreneur my picture would be way down already mm -hmm. do you want to try and keep your image in the top images not the top rated ones but you know the top of the next bunch down yeah, okay. for as long as possible so that's why we use the 500,000 mark mm -hmm. as a basis now we're not saying you can't go over that yes of course if I really felt like I wanted to use entrepreneur I would but um don't just base it on who has the most hashtags try and find ones that are in that middling ground that are popular hashtags but they're not overly popular hashtags okay um and that's that's really the trick to hashtag things now you've got 30 hashtags um, to be able to use so you know there is an optimum and loads of tests have been done on what you should and shouldn't but basically the more you use the more eyes you can be on your content so um, I would tend to have a core group of hashtags that you're going to put on every single image mm -hmm. that is core to your message core to your brand mm -hmm. um, say that's 15 or 20 have them in a notepad so I use Evernote um because it links from my computer to my um to my phone so i can use it on both but even if you just had it in a notepad on your actual phone you can use that um and then you can personalize each image with the leftover hashtags because obviously not every image is going to necessarily have the same same message so um that's probably my biggest tip on hashtags and there are other apps and stuff that you can use that i will share over the next few weeks to try and because yeah. i was sort of going for the ones that had you know over a million yeah. thinking that was the yeah. best one to go for. It, it, that's what everybody thinks oh that's the most yeah, popular yeah. so everybody must use that but that's the problem is that everybody does use it so yeah. um it's almost overly popular it's like you're not standing out from the crowd because it's just too many people using it um, so yeah by all means if you want to throw one or two of them in there you can but I wouldn't use all 30 hashtags based on massive ones I would try and mix it up um, so that you've got some that are a bit more middling or even slightly lower but you yeah. know are going to be more targeted so you know avoid generalized hashtags like follow for follow or you know um, I don't know happy day or you know love family unless your photo is specific to that yeah you know um you know quite often i'll put family first on or family time on something that i'm sharing that's personal if it's a picture of me and connor or you know but that's because that's what that's the relevant part of that but i'll still have my core hashtag that are there to um let me attract the people who would be coming to me yeah so, um, so has that been a foul, you guys? Has that been helpful? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thanks so much. That's what is it? I'm going to let you go because, um, well, the time's running down and I think we've said enough. You've got enough information to think about. Um, so as I say, I'm going to still be posting tips in the group every day um, for you. So, you know, keep checking in and letting me know that you're using them or if you've got questions. And I'll probably do another catch up in another seven days just to see how everybody's going on week two. Um, so can you just tune in to that? I'll just create an event again for you. Okay? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.